What's up, Night Owl? Still here back with another Rhyme of the Frost made video, and today we're going to be talking about the quest Town Hall Capers. The Town Hall Capers quest is unique to the other 10 towns starting quest in that it actually happens, it's actually an event that happens on a trigger rather than the party hears rumors or the, or the party has a quest giver picks up a quest. This one is sort of an event that happens that the that the players investigate, which leads to further information, depending on which of the of the caper events happen. There are two total, one involving the Cauldron of Plenty, which the party will find if they do the Toil and Trouble Ten Towns quest in East Haven. And the other will happen when a group of do when when you as the DM decide that a group of Duergar who have been um, setting up inside of the East Haven Ferry decide to break into the town hall and steal this Charlin masthead from inside the, the the town hall, and then the party will investigate that, and they won't find any information on that particular event till much later in in into chapter three, the Sunblight Fortress. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, if the party has the Cauldron of Plenty, wherever that cauldron ends up is going to make a huge impact on that particular town. Now, just as a reminder, the Cauldron of Plenty has the ability to essentially turn water into food. You fill this thing with water. It's a massive cauldron that you fill with water, and it will produce food to feed about 150 people. This thing could have a huge impact on 10 towns because it just generates food, and food is pretty scarce here in Icewind Dale. So this thing could really make a difference in whichever town it ends up. The best deal that the party will find when they find, when they get the Cauldron of Plenty, if they want to sell it, a lot of my groups have have wanted to, the, the ones that did the Lonelywood quest, which gives you the deed to Ramshackle Inn, a lot of my groups have tried to set up Ramshackle Inn and want to, want to establish a business. And those groups that got the Cauldron wanted to take it to the Ramshackle as part of their business. And, that's, and that, uh, as a DM, if they decide to do that, that would make Lonelywood... That would really put Lonelywood on the map, not just because the adventurers stay there, but because there's, it's uh, food, it produces food there, among the other things at Lonelywood. But this video isn't about the Cauldron of Plenty. This video is about what happens when the Cauldron of Plenty ends up in East Haven. If the party is looking to sell the Cauldron of Plenty, the Speaker of East Haven will offer them five gemstones, each worth 500 gold pieces, 2,500 gold total. If they, if they decide to use a persuasion roll to try to get that number up, he will offer as much as 10 500 gold pieces, 5,000 gold pieces for the cauldron. This is the best deal that the party can find in 10 towns. Regardless of which deal the party takes, the speaker's going to need 48 hours to call in some debts and get together the money in order to pay the party, at which time the speaker will ask the party if the cauldron can be kept at the town hall. He will actually insist upon it. Now, the party will probably need some convincing before they come off of this particular cauldron, especially since 5,000 gold pieces are on the line and your party knows that this is a D&D &D game. So the speaker will actually will put guards on the cauldron for those 48 hours. We'll put town guards on them. And if the party would like, they can be the guards. And they'll probably take, take them up on that offer, depending on the party. But the, the cauldron will be under, under guard by either NPCs or the party, their choice. And from there, you will move on to the town hall capers, the actual um, group that will come in and try to steal the cauldron. News of this cauldron will reach the speaker at Targos, Nailth Maxwell Dinar, who will send thugs in order to go and steal the cauldron from the town hall. A spy by the name of Prudence works as a clerk at the town hall and will feed Nerth all of the information that he needs in order to plan this heist. The three thugs will show up to the town hall with an axe beak that they plan on tying the cauldron to in order to drag the cauldron back to Targos. Now, if the, if the party does not get involved in this robbery, the thugs will take the speaker and hold him hostage in order to have the guards drop their weapons so that they can steal the cauldron, tie it up, tied up to the axe beak, and away it goes. It's important to note that these thugs are under strict orders not to kill anyone. If there's a, if a combat breaks out, they get they knock them to zero and unconscious and leave them alive. That's part, that part's important. Also, the tracks that the thugs make with their axe beaks, or with the single axe beak, and dragging the cauldron through the snow, those tracks disappear after 1d4 hours. So the party doesn't have a whole lot of time to track them. If the players weren't around during the robbery, then they'll show up to the town hall 
and they'll hear hear banging coming from the dungeon, which is where the thugs locked up the guards and the speaker before they left. And when the party releases them, they can get all the information about the thugs and possibly track them down to Targos. Now it's from here that it's gonna take it's gonna require a lot of thought on your part and a lot of prep work because the book doesn't give you much as far as what to do or, or what what they expect the party to do when they get to Targos, because chances are they're going to track this down to Targos. They're going to need to ask around town and gather some information, but they do have the, they do have the means and they, they do have the, the roles that will lead them to Targos where they will find out that the speaker is, is a Zentarim and that they stole the cauldron. Like I said earlier, that cauldron is going to make a huge impact wherever it ends up. So it's not going to be a big secret who stole it after after a certain amount of time. I mean, you just can't you just can't keep something like that hidden in 10 towns, at least not for very long. So once once word gets out that there's a cauldron that produces food, the party's going to be able to track it down. And from here, it's going to require a lot of thought on your part. The the party will almost certainly want to track down Nerith, the speaker of Targos and and kill him and take him down or at least have him arrested. And the impacts of that, the impacts of Targos losing their speaker are going to are, are going to be heavily reliant on you as the DM because the, the book doesn't give you much on that. As a matter of fact, it ends with the fact that the party finds out where the cauldron ends up. So what I did personally is is Targos, or once Targos lost its speaker, they had to find a new one. I've even had a party go so far as to sacrifice the speaker of Targos to the Frost Maiden the next time that the lottery happened. Because they assumed that the speaker was was rigging the lottery anyway, due to the the cold hearted killer's quest, and there was a lot there was a lot that led to that particular situation. But in one of my games, the speaker of Targos was sacrificed to the Frost Maiden on on the new moon. <laughs> so that was a that was a good one. So the speaker turned into a cold light walker, and that's and I had the party learn about what um, what happens to sacrifices to the Frost Maiden, which the book hints at they become cold light walkers. So in the event that your party decides to sacrifice the speaker of Targos to the Frost Maiden or anyone or witnesses a sacrifice to the Frost Maiden, and go ahead and let you know here that I would recommend that they turn into a cold light walker right before their eyes, and that's how the party learns that the Frost Maiden is actually recruiting with with these uh, with these humanoid sacrifices. Now, the other robbery that happens at the town hall has much less player interaction. As a matter of fact, there's nothing that even hints to the fact that this is going that this is going to happen or that it really has happened until until it's over. There's nothing really that the party can do. The, bo the book doesn't expect the party to even get involved with this particular heist. So the Dewar Guard that are set up in the East Haven Ferry have been eyeing up this masthead made completely out of Chartolin at the town hall. And so they break in. They use their, their invisibility. They wait at night. They get in there. They steal the masthead, and they take it all the way to Sunblade. And the shards of that masthead are not seen again until chapter three. The speaker will let the party know that it was stolen and that they will offer 50 gold pieces per shard brought back because some shards were, were left when the Duergar stole it. And the speaker will offer the party, offer the party 50 gold. The, the party will find these shards at Sunblight at the base of the dragon's, the, the shaft that the dragon use, uses to get in and out of Sunblight. So that's where the shards end up. Uh, again, the party won't hear about, they won't have any any hints leading up to the Duergar stealing this stuff that they, they could, if you, if you want the party to get involved with this particular heist, I'll call it a heist. If you want the party to get involved with this one, they, there are hints that there are Duergar at the East Haven Ferry. If they do the unseen quest, the unseen quest, one of Sunblight's children is held up at, at a Duergar outpost in the mountains for the unseen quest. The other of Sunblight's children is at the East Haven Ferry. So if the party does the unseen quest, they will actually find a letter that hints at Duergar at the at the East Haven Ferry. You can have the party show up and deal with those Duergar before the heist, during the heist. You can plan that out however you like if you want the party to actually get involved. But uh, other than that, there, there won't be anything to really tell the party that Duergar are showing up. Now, the book does provide a map for the East Haven Town Hall, but there's not really much in the East Haven Town Hall to, to really need a map. There is one encounter with a ghost in Area 6, and, and I'll show the map up on the screen right here. 
Area 6 is relevant because that's where the masthead is, and that's also where the the white lady, the ghost, uh, is, is present. So if the party, if you decide to run your party through this map, or if they go look at the masthead while they're while they're in the area, they can find the ghost and they will encounter her. Also, in Area 14, there's a library and there's a, a secret book in the library that is Zan's spellbook, one of the Arcane Brotherhood, the simulacrum from the Lost Spire of Netherwill quest, and also the wizard that was sacrificed when the party visits East Haven. There's a, a burning wizard when the party arrives that, that's being that's being burned at the stake. Not a sacrifice to the Frostmaiden, but just a, a burn, uh, a wizard being burned, uh, executed. And his spell book is here in the library. And just as a little side note for this particular map, there is a dungeon with cells. So if any of your characters ever get into trouble and get arrested, they may end up here at the town hall at which point you could use this map as a sort of way for the party to break them out or the way a way for that particular character to escape, things like that. Um, you can find, there's, there's ways to find uses for this particular map. I didn't use it in any of my games, and I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about whether or not I, I will in future Rhyme of the Frostmaiden games. I would like to fill this stuff with actual loot and things to do. And obviously, if the party sets up at the cauldron, they could you could have something... Maybe if they explore the the place in the middle of the night, things like that. Maybe the ghost is haunting them while they're while they're guarding the cauldron. There's ways to go about it, but the book doesn't really give you much. So there's a lot of a lot of flavor to be had here with this particular map. But with that, that's it for the the town hall capers. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit those buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the town hall capers quest. I'd like to know how how you how you use this particular quest. Let me know in those comments. And if you want to be a part of this D&D community, make sure you join the Discord. Link in the description. Come by, ask questions. Let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.